Hello, everyone. I am Dave Goodrich, and I'm here with Jeff Gerlach and Sean Mason. I'm an instructional designer with the MyBlend program, and today we're just going to be talking with Sean Mason, who is an instructor in Bay City. He teaches um, at John Glenn High School and also uh, through Michigan Virtual University. And he's been doing some uh, great things with blended learning in his classroom, and we're just going to get a chance to run some questions by him and learn about some of the things he's doing. So, Sean, welcome. Thank you for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, so um, maybe you could just tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and what grade you teach and subject and, and all that jazz. Okay, well, I teach at John Glenn High School in Bay City, Michigan. Uh, I teach academic biology, AP biology, biotechnology, and anatomy in my face-to-face -face classroom. And then uh, for MBU, I teach various topics from biology to bioethics to forensics, a um, little bit of everything. I also teach for uh, the University of Phoenix, uh, teach geology with a lab for them online. And then I do various PDs. I teach blended learning, actually, the Blick course for the REMC of Michigan as well. So um, basically, I got into blended learning just because uh, it was a good way for me to create an online resource for my students and for me, help me get organized, help me keep all of my things in one place. And it started off as just basically trying to be efficient. Uh, and then as more and more Web 2.0 tools come out and we utilize them, obviously um, we find out that there's a lot more there that we can use um, as learning tools, not just as organizational resources. Um, so that's how I started. Um, Google has been my, my friend and my lifeline uh, for most of my teaching career. And uh, that's been my platform. So I use a lot of Google sites, uh, a lot of forums, uh, a lot of Google Docs and things of that nature to collaborate with my students and, and my staff members. So um, I have used a lot of other tools, but I always seem to, to come back to that as my home base. I like, hear you. I am. Um pretty much infatuated with Google myself, and I know how that goes. I mean, they just, they suck you in, don't they? It's like a tractor beam. Every time you think it, they're, they're stagnant, they come up with something brand new and, yeah. and revolutionize the, the world of education. So. It's ridiculous. I mean, I keep trying to get away from Google, but I just can't. I can't. Yeah, yeah. They're just too good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um, could you talk a little bit, like, about... The, the the narrative, the story of how you got inspired to kind of, I mean, you talked a little bit about how you started using it just to stay organized, but were there any other inspirations that you had? Well, you know, I, I just remember when I first started teaching, you know, obviously just like everybody else with the dry erase marker on the, uh, the projector, shooting it up to the screen and sweat dripping off your forehead and going home at night with <laughs> hands covered in black soot and uh, kids, you know, drooling on themselves as they took notes. And uh, after a couple of years of that, I just, I'd had enough of that. I needed to find something else. And uh, I kept approaching my tech department just about an LCD projector. You know, that's probably where I started, the ability to put what I was seeing in front of my students. Um, and just step by step, you know, then hooking your stereo up to it. And then uh, the next step is an interactive whiteboard finally in your classroom and, and getting to pilot clickers and, and just trying new things whenever they were available has been my real um, sort of resource or my exploratory adventure with uh, technology in general. But for me, taking those chances and, and being okay when they don't go so right, because <laughs> they don't always go right, um, is kind of been my uh, platform and my uh, rubber band, so to speak, to jump ahead of uh, where others might have been, to, to take those chances in your classroom. Because yeah, absolutely. And just to clarify, I mean, your students were drooling because you were so good, right? And you oh. just wanted to implement technology to get the focus off yourself, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I just I didn't want to be, you know, the focus. Obviously, I was not that enduring to them. I mean, I could tell if it was just me there in that dry erase pen, uh, I could tell what the results were going to be. Um, <laughs> stared at a thirty-year-old man for an hour, you know, for seven hours a day. You know, 
nobody. I don't want to. And so just having the ability to, you know, obviously differentiate your classroom, bring new tools and resources in, have them be actively engaged in a project, uh, big on project-based learning. That's been my um, new push through using Google Sites. This last year I had students, uh, my AP Biology students, all built a Google site and applied to a STEM competition. Thirteen of them uh, earned $1,000 to do research uh, in wow. do their actual research project and compete in the A.H. Nicholas Innovation Awards uh, competition, and that was at uh, Saginaw Valley University. And so all 13 placed in the top 20, uh, one of them took fourth. We didn't win. We, we did lose the... Um, it, to Dow, uh, big surprise. <laughs> it, but it was, it was a shocker. We were a little bummed out. We thought we were uh, leaps and bounds ahead, and, and we got edged out at the end. So, but that's okay. But still, we had you know thirteen thousand dollars to do research with in our classroom, and no. kids, we used Google Apps the whole time, and uh, I can show you some of those. But the students built phenomenal websites. Um, they used presentation to build their posters in, and I had those printed out in large uh, 48 by 36 inch posters for them to do their poster presentations on. And so we just did, we were able to do a lot of things that without, you know, a blended environment, there's no way I could have organized that many different yeah. things going on in the same classroom. And so yeah, and well, in a, in a sense, you, you did win in terms of numbers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I feel like. And they they feel like they lost, <laughs> and I know, you know. So well, I mean, even that can be a good learning experience, right? Those kind of yeah, sure. competitive environments. Um, so kudos to you. That's that's huge. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. it's been fun, and, and and I plan on doing that every year. Um, yeah. You know, after the experience this year that I had with it, that'll be uh, an integral part of that course, and hopefully more as we go. So. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, uh, so Sean, I, I wanted to ask a little bit more about um, kind of your intentionality of how you decide uh, what elements of your class you're going to put into the face-to-face -face environment versus um, the online environment. I know that that's kind of a, um, it's more of a thinking process, right? And it's going to depend on the lesson, it's going to depend on a lot of variables. But could you walk us through your thinking process of how you usually decide what you're going to do and where you're going to do it? Yeah, if there's not a tangible experience for the students to have, if it's not hands-on, um, I try to make that some type of um, online component if possible. If, the, if it's an assessment, like a multiple choice uh, question, a matching question, if it's something like that, I'm going to build something for that review or that, that assessment uh, in, a, in an online environment to incorporate into my face-to-face. Uh, then when it comes to a lab, because I teach biology and anatomy, that's obviously going to be hands-on. Uh, but I, I, I see absolutely no benefit in me collecting 150 reviews, taking them home, and the kids waiting two days to get them back. And by the time they've gotten their feedback, we're on to you know, two sections later. Or, you know, and it's, it's that kind of thing. If I can give instant formative feedback by using... Uh, you know, more efficient tool, whether it's a, a Skyward test or um, a, a Socrative or even a Quizlet, you know, anything that I can use that gives them that instant feedback and allows them to correct their misconceptions or mistakes, that's kind of where I, I play in that realm there. And it's not, it's not a hard line. You know, sometimes students need that paper pencil uh, interaction with math and, and to be able to write out equations and draw out things. And so there's times for that. But then if there is a tool that I know is going to engage them and I know they're going to be actively participating in it and want to do, like if it's a Google Draw I can have them do instead of doing a concept map on a piece of paper where they can actually go copy images in and paste them in and write on top of them. They love doing that. Um, you know, or who wants to make another poster? You know, well, let's make a presentation slide or a drawing, you know, and let's, let's be a little more innovative, something that they might actually uh, use someday, too. So trying to give the, them these other tools while also giving them content is a big way to do that. Um, so 
for me, it's kind of easy because I teach science. Um, they need a little bit of direct instruction from me. I know that. So I do have to do a little bit of formal notes uh, but then in, in lab. So they're gonna, the hands-on lab portion is obviously going to be them doing that. But then when I have them import their data into a spreadsheet or do a Google form or a spreadsheet, sorry, and then have them create a table in the, in the spreadsheet, um, then I've now blended that lesson, if that makes sense. So you can, you can have both at the same time. Uh, but if it's just a checkbox, uh, multiple choice assessment, that's going to be an online component if I can do it. So you've been, Sean, you've been teaching uh, for about 14 years now? Uh, about 12 years. 12 years, 12 years? okay. So you've, um, you've been, <clears throat> and about five years has been blended. Is that yeah. right? Okay, yes. so, sure. so could you maybe just give us an example of... Um, maybe a, a specific lesson or an example of what blended learning looks like in your classroom. Well, this is my my homepage right here for all my classes. So if a student has me, they know that they can come here, and I have links that take you back to the school website. I have their Skyward Access login. Um, and then these are all the classes that I could teach as well as some additional help pages. Um, I teach Science Olympiad, so I have a page for them as well, too. Um, but if I go into my AP Biology page, I have tools here where if students want to access various things that we're doing, um, they know they can always come to this home base. So all of my AP Biology students will come here uh, to look for assignments, especially if they miss school. Um, I do put some grant scholarship opportunities for STEM research. I make a list for them. We're doing guest speakers right now, so another blended component. Students have access to this. Uh, they need to bring in a guest speaker uh, in their field of research, those students I was talking about. So today we actually just talked to uh, Kelly and Sally. They're from an assisted uh, living care um, facility in Midland. They, we just did a Skype with them this morning in the classroom. And, you know, even as I say that, I just laugh because, you know, five years ago, would not have been doing that. Absolutely. Um, That's awesome. So the kids get on, they sign up for these dates, and they know what they're doing. So they, they do that, and then they know those are their available times and dates. And if somebody's in there, they don't encroach on them. My syllabus is on here. My plan book is always available, as is Skyward Login for the students. My plan book is just that. It's a plan book where if a student wants to know what we've been up to on any given day, oh, well, let's just pick a day because we finished the AP exam, they, they know they can go on here and actually figure out what we are doing or what we did on that day. Um, back in, I, I use Interactive Connect software instead of rigorous homework. Uh, for a small fee when I bought this textbook, and most textbooks come with some sort of software, this is um, formative uh, reviews for each unit and section for the AP exam. Uh, it's very beneficial. It, I'm, I'm hoping it increases their test scores quite a bit. I make quizlets uh, so students know that they can come on here for every single chapter that we cover in AP Biology, and, you know, anywhere from 50 terms to 30 terms for each chapter. It's a good resource for, resource, sorry, for them uh, to study. To it looks like you're using a lot of formative assessment options through different yes. tools. How, is that like a daily thing where you're giving them? Uh, yes. Formative? Yes. We, we spend about 25 minutes or so with direct instruction in this class because it's a block class. It's actually two hours. And so, you know, about a quarter of that will be direct instruction. Um, half of it will be uh, inquiry based lab. And then I'll be using online interactive formative tools for that other 25% um, of the time. And to give you an idea, this, I mean, there's a lot here. This is, as, as I built this, um, this is one that I'm building this year, actually. So this is the first year I built this particular website because AP Biology was new here at John Glenn this year. Um, but this is how I set up all of my sites. And if, if my students do need to get to a resource, if it's a review and, and they are in school, they know they can come here and access all of their notes, anything they might need for each and every chapter that we do cover. So if they do miss or forget or lose their notes, they know they can get on here and easily find them. Okay. And so this this whole course is really sitting right here in front of them. 
and they, there's no guesswork. There's no, what are we doing? I wonder what we're going to be doing here or there. They know. They know exactly what they're going to be doing. Yeah, um, absolutely. For each unit, before I have them build their own lab, because they have to build their own labs in AP Biology, they actually do a virtual lab. And so those are kind of cool. They're, they're not terribly difficult, but they teach them the concept before I actually have them build their own. And so this is a form of that, another blended component. Uh, and there's a worksheet that goes with this that they fill out digitally uh, and then submit to me. And so there's all of these components. I'd say with me about, about half of my um, assignments are going to be some form of online component. I would say the other half is going to be hands-on in the classroom uh, with me and you know, sometimes doing computational work, especially in AP Biology. Yeah, so for seven years before you started doing this, um, could you talk a little bit about um, maybe some advantages that you've experienced, some, some major changes that you've experienced since implementing blended learning that have been beneficial to you? Well, one thing, you know, when you don't blend and you just are the sage on the stage, so to speak, and um, the kids are just looking to you, for all of the answers, you don't have all the answers, <laughs> and you're not supposed to. Um, so by doing this, I mean, I can teach kids for literally two hours, and they don't fall asleep. I don't know if there's too many high school teachers that can say that they could be in the classroom teaching, really we're learning together. Um, but I don't think that too many people could say that if they weren't blending. Um, you know, a small portion is lecture, and then the rest of the time we're released either virtually or working on a Learn Smart lesson together. <coughs> Sorry, I have a little bit of a cold. Um, or some type of blended component is always incorporated on a daily basis, whether it's a Google Draw, whether they're doing a spreadsheet with a, uh, a chart they have to make out of it, or they're working on their websites, um, which I'm going to actually show you some of those real quick because. As the year goes on, if I do feel like I'm in a position where the kids are getting bored or they're disengaging, I can always draw to that resource. And what that looks like, can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see it. Good deal. Okay. This is just a website I've made to make Google Sites, but I know I've got a link on here that will take me right to my students' links. So this is Anna's, and her project was over, um, she tried to increase water quality by um, using freshwater clams. And so you can see she's, oh, it's going to take a while to load some of these. I know you know how Google works sometimes, but uh, there are images on here that are should be coming up. And it's just so fantastic that they have spaces out on the web that they can display their work for and take with them from here on out. They'll be able to share it with family and people oh, anywhere yeah. about what they're doing. And I'm sure that that's very engaging and helpful for them in the learning process to, to be this able to. Justin's, but I'm, I'm looking for other. Oh, okay, so you can see that they'll be working on this. This is a Google Draw he's inserted um, into his uh, website. His was He did his over the Emerald Ashbore to try to do seed preservation. He's actually been awarded another grant from the Pollination Project an additional thousand dollars to uh, do more work and more seed preservation. So the, a lot of these students have, you know, found not just, you know, a, a meaningful project, but they've found some passion in science, which is what we, are, we always hope for as teachers, I know. Absolutely. And we, fi we keep finding that teachers, those who are in the sciences who are doing inquiry-based, project-based learning already, uh, Blended really comes alongside and complements that a great deal because it offers more opportunity uh, both inside and outside of the class to, to go deeper. That's great. Um, what are, Real quick, I know we want to be sensitive to the limited time that we have with you. Well, then I'll about five minutes. So. <laughs> right, right. So real, real quick, would you be able to tap into some of the challenges you've encountered? Well, you know, as tech savvy as kids are, um, they, they aren't as tech savvy as they think sometimes. They really need good instruction. Um, I would say don't 
try to use something until you've mastered it or at least thoroughly understand how to help somebody do it. Mm. Uh, pick something small that you're really familiar with. Um, it, it doesn't matter what it is. It really does not. If it's Quizlet, you know, you start using those uh, and incorporate those. And um, just make sure that you have it as part of your classroom and that it's, again, something small and easy for you to do. And from there, just keep adding. Um, I started off uh, using, you know, switching from writing with a dry erase marker to an LCD projector to adding sound to uh, a wiki page and, and then recording lessons and putting them in a shared file and that was clunky. Um, and then, you know, going to a website, Weebly, and then I found Google Sites would actually incorporate all my tools. And so I went through my own transition and once you find something that you really like, stick with it add to it. And now when I build my classes, I know what I want. I know I want Quizlets there. I know I'm going to want my file storage pages there so I can instantly set up, you know, all of my links right off the bat and for any class that I might have to add. And I know the components I need. But I didn't know those even three years ago, even two years ago. Um, you know, I was still learning what I needed to have available. And now I know and that's that's the the learning curve. There is a curve there, and so yes. you're gonna fail. You're gonna find things that your students hate, and just find out the ones that they don't hate and use those, and and get feedback from them. I I just yeah. gave them their a form for them to fill out on the website to tell me how they did on the AP exam. Ask them what they liked about this year, what they didn't like. Um, you know, they, they didn't like a couple of the virtual labs, and I asked them to point out which ones, and I can just remove those and supplement them with some, some other things. So, um, you know, it's, it, it really depends on who you are. Uh, there's all levels of blend. I always tell my blended uh, learning teacher students that it, if it's one thing that's technical, you've blended your classroom. It doesn't matter. You can be 10% blended or 90% blended. Uh, the fact that you're incorporating these things in and you're using them in a meaningful way is all that really matters. Yeah, and it looks it looks different and unique in each classroom, oh, yeah. doesn't it? I mean, yeah, so kudos to you for um, all the experimentation you've been doing and the things that you've been learning, but even more so being willing to share the things that you're learning with other teachers. Um, we want to, you know, just share stories like yours um, and, and promote the things that you're doing across the state, and I'm sure that many teachers will appreciate you taking the time to, to share some of these things that you're doing. So we really want to say thank you uh, for taking the time to talk with us, and we look forward to hopefully some more future conversations around, yeah, around anytime, these things. Yeah, anytime. If I had more time, we could sit here and talk for another hour, but oh, yes. a lot of examples I can show you. I just, I, unfortunately, I have students walking in in a minute here. Right, so. absolutely. Well, thank you for taking the time. Let's do it again sometime, okay? Will do. You guys have a good day. And thanks, you too, Sean. Talk to you later. Bye.